Okay. Welcome to today's uh, ISCK PG Clinics. Uh, today uh, we have Professor Shine Sadashivam as your faculty. <laughs> Professor Shine is the Professor and Head of Department of Gastroenterology of Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, Kochi. Professor has taken classes for you earlier and it was well received. So welcome uh, Professor Shine Sadashivam. Thank you, sir. And for today's case uh, will be discussed by Dr. Sudhi, uh, senior resident, she second year DM resident of Amrita Institute, Kochi. Welcome, Dr. Sudhi. And uh, welcome, Jandi, ma'am. Uh, good, good evening, ma good evening. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, madam. Good evening, ma'am. And I, I also welcome Dr. Anup, uh, uh, finally, DM, finally, DNB from Amala Institute of Medical Sciences and Dr. Naveen Chand, again, finally, resident from SIMS uh, Chennai. So, welcome all of you. And I request uh, uh, Professor Shain Sadashivan to take over. And the households are except uh, the faculty uh, and the presenter or the discussant or the other persons. Please keep your audio and video in the switch off, audio and video in the off mode. Dr. Sudhi, you can upload your slides and verify. Over to Professor Shain. Yes. Yes. You can start, Sudhi. You can start, Sudhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is, uh, is my screen visible? Yeah, visible. Uh, very good evening. Um, so I'll begin with our case presentation for today. Um, so our patient, uh, we had a 54-year-old male patient who was a local business owner and an astrologer coming from Trishur. Uh, he was married with two children, educated up to the 12th standard, and the history was provided by the patient and his daughter, and they were a reliable source of information. So coming to our chief complaint, um, our patient, he presented with complaints of loose stools for the last three months, uh, maroon colored stools since one and a half months, uh, abdominal pain since one month, and generalized tiredness since one month. History of presenting illness, the patient was apparently well until three months ago uh, when he start first started developing symptoms. His symptoms began when he noticed the change in the consistency of his stools and started experiencing loose stools, initially two to three episodes per day. He was having loose tools every day and over a period of time, over the next one to one and a half months, there was an increase in gradual increase in the frequency of tools and it increased to almost six to eight times per day. He described his tools as being small volume, watery tools and initially it was yellow colored but uh, in the last one month there was a change, he noticed a change in the color of his tools and it changed to a maroon black color. There, he, there was no history of any foul-smelling stools. Stools were not greasy. They did not float on water, and it was not associated with any excessive flatulence or abdominal bloating. He also gave history of nocturnal symptoms, specifically with history of waking up in the middle of the night two to three times to uh, with uh, passing loose stools twice to thrice per night. There was no improvement in fasting. Uh, there was no improvement in his symptoms with fasting. And he also gives history of intake of painkillers, which were prescribed elsewhere over the last one month. Um, one month later, after onset of these symptoms, he went on to develop uh, uh, developing abdominal pain. Abdominal pain was initially in the hypogastrium, and then it became diffuse. Uh, he described the pain as being a mild pain, uh, which was intermittent and colicky in nature, not radiating. Um, and he also said that he felt that the pain aggravated on taking meals with an urge to defecate soon after the onset of the pain. And this was also this was accompanied by relief of the pain after he moved his bowels. Um, so with these symptoms, he developed complaints of easy fatigability and generalized weakness. He noticed that he was getting tired even on doing his routine activity. And uh, since two weeks, he was only able to carry out basic daily activities. There is history of associated loss of appetite and history of significant unintentional weight loss over the past few months, which he accounted to about 18 kgs over the last three months. 
Uh, he also gives history of evening rise of temperature, which was there for the last one month. He says that he had fever most of the days of the week and fever was associated with chills. Fever that was documented by him at home was around 100 to 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Now coming to negative history, there was no pain on defecation. There is no history of a PRB. There is no history of any perianal swelling or discharge. No history of alternating constipation. No abdominal distension or vomiting. There is no history of laxative abuse. There is no history of jaundice or itching. No history of joint pains or low backache. No history of oral ulcers, redness or itching in the eyes. Uh, night blindness, any skin lesions or genital ulcers. There is no history of paresthesia, tingling, numbness or difficulty in walking. No history of flushing episodes, hyperpigmentation, skin hyperpigmentation or palpitations. No history of chest pain or breathlessness on lying down. No history of travel in the recent past. No history of recurrent use of antibiotics or antibiotics for a long duration of time. There is no history of radiation exposure. No history of any high risk behavior and no history of uh, TB in the past or contact with persons with TB. For these complaints, he was admitted at a local hospital and he was evaluated uh, with imaging and colonoscopy, uh, following which he was uh, started on oral medications, which he says was prescribed to him in around a one gram dose, given twice daily. Um, at present, the patient is only able to carry out limited self-care activities and is better wheelchair bound for more than 50% uh, of the, for most of the day. So, uh, so can, uh, we, to... can we discuss the diarrhea first? So, uh, yes. What is the definition of diarrhea? So diarrhea is uh, defined as a uh, uh, change in uh, frequency, change in consistency, and uh, change in uh, volume of uh, stools. Increased frequency, increased consistency, and uh, volume of stool. Okay, volume of stool. Like any study from India? Do you uh, remember any study? Uh, actually, uh, uh, 300 more. Yeah, yeah uh, the normal frequency of stool. Actually, there is some study by Jayanti Madam, and there was some study from Gusi Gosher. So, what is the normal frequency? In... So, up to three, uh, so up to three stools per day is considered as a normal frequency, but yeah. more than three stools. So they basically, these are all Western this thing, you know. So. From four to uh, uh, forty-two is a normal, so range is high, you know, because we take more fiber-rich diet. The frequency also yes, is slightly more. So, the, do you think it's a chronic diarrhea or acute diarrhea? So this is a chronic diarrhea since it's yeah, a three-month history. Yeah. And then, what is the stool weight? Usual the stool weight in. Western is 200 grams. So what is the... the, the 200 Indian? grams and Indians with a high fiber diet around 300 grams per day. Okay. Is, so uh, now do you think it's an organic or a functional? How will you differentiate between these two? So uh, or, uh, so certain differentiating features between organic and functional in organ nocturnal symptoms will be seen in case of or organic, uh, organic diarrhea. Then presence of symptoms like significant weight loss uh, and uh, high volume diarrhea is more in favor of an organic uh, diarrhea. Presence of uh, blood mucus, uh, these are all be in favor of uh, organic diarrhea as compared to a functional diarrhea. What about the onset of diarrhea? Um, of... The organic and the uh, functional, which one will be insidious? Functional would be yeah. insidious. Sir. Functional, will functional be would be insidious. insidious. And, and then organic, usually acute onset of illness. Acute, yes, sir. Yeah. Any other, any other uh, uh, ways by which, uh, any other way by which you can differentiate between organic and functional? Mm. So, cause, uh, other systemic involvement. And then his dehydration, hypokalemia. Fever. So, dehydration, yes. Yes, all these things favors. Uh, organic cause. Organic disease. Incontinence. Yes, yes sir. Uh, wow. Incontinence, use organic cause. Yeah, it is organic. So these are the points to differentiate between. And then you have to differentiate between small bowel and large bowel. So how do you differentiate yes, between sir. these two? 
so so um, no, small bowel diarrhea is uh, usually um, is, uh, it's usually small volume yeah. uh, sorry it's large volume diarrhea large volume. Yeah. Uh, with large volume diarrhea whereas the uh, large bowel diarrhea is usually small volume yeah. uh, more frequent uh, more uh, there is associated rectal symptoms uh, may be seen with a large bowel diarrhea Spreads of blood and mucus again is more in favor of a large bowel diarrhea. Anything else? Um, then uh, pain. If it's more of a central pain, it's more in it's more of a small bowel uh, seen in case of small bowel pathology. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then. Yeah. What about steatorrhea? Uh, so steatorrhea would uh, fat a uh, malabsorption, so it would be more commonly seen with a small bowel. Yeah, and then any any other vitamin deficiency which indicates what is it a small bowel or a large bowel? Uh, so B twelve deficiencies, if uh, features of B twelve deficiency if present, would uh, suggest a uh, small bowel yeah. diarrhea. Vitamin deficiency, small bowel. Okay. Small bowel diarrhea. Yes. Yeah. So now, um, how will you differentiate between? incontinence and diarrhea okay um, so so um, in in case of diarrhea there is an uh, the urge uh, diarrhea is associated with urgency. urge and increased frequency yeah. uh, urgency and increased frequency whereas incontinence uh, there's ab there's absence of a rectal urgency um, it's involuntary Okay. What what are the three types of incontinence? You know. Uh, so passive incontinence, urge incontinence, and overflow incontinence. What's the difference? How will you differentiate between these three? So so passive incontinence. Uh, the patient has no awareness uh, of uh, the rectal sensation. Okay. In case of urge incontinence, the patient has sensation, uh, but is unable to. Um, uh, has uh, has sensation but is unable to control. Uh, uh, he has in, and uh, overflow incontinence is because of uh, uh, because of fecal loading. They have incontinence. Anyhow, incontinence in Crohn's disease. What are the ways by which Crohn's disease can Crohn's disease itself can present as incontinence? Um. If there is a fistula, so, uh, oh, oh yeah, yes. So they can have urge incontinence. Uh, so when, because in case they, of perianal involvement, yeah, perianal fistula. So if that is involving the sphincter, yes. what will happen? So then they have overflow incontinence. Yeah, again, see if the if the the sphincter damage, yeah, due to a fistula and abscess, which is in, it is involved in the the sphincter, it can cause incontinence. Is it not? Yes. Similarly, yes, sir. if you do a surgery, what will happen? Post so surgery, surgery also because a, of sphincter damage. Yeah, you, post surgery for a fistula or an abscess that can also produce any any other ways by which yes, um, incontinence in Crohn's disease. So because of bowel resection, they can have. Yeah, the, the bowel resection or any any surgery or injury to the sphincter can cause. So if yes, in a long-standing inflammatory bowel disease, what are the complications? Suppose the patient is having a rectal malign rectal uh, Crohn's disease, they can develop Ob malignancies. Yeah, they and can malignancy have, uh, and it is involving the sphincter. So, the, so the yes, Crohn's sir. disease itself can cause incontinence. These are the three ways. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, did you mention about any urinary symptoms in this patient? Uh, no, sir, I did not, sir. Yeah. So, you were talking about all, drug, drug history. Yes, okay. Which yes, drug? Sir. He was taking some NSAIDs and then colicis. Yes, sir. He said painkillers. So, most likely NSAIDs he would have taken, sir. Okay. What are the drugs which can cause diarrhea? Common drugs? So, commonly used drugs, we antibiotics, most commonly antibiotics, most antibiotics, especially... Uh, Penicillins, uh, 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 they can cause uh, diarrhea. Then uh, even uh, PPIs can cause diarrhea. Then we have um, chemotherapeutic drugs, immune checkpoint inhibitors, um, uh, antiretroviral uh, therapy. Uh, heart can cause uh, certain uh, uh, 
nelfenavir sicanavir they can cause uh, diarrhea then um, um beta blockers any anti diabetic di uh, drugs cause, causing diarrhea yes uh, metformin acarbose metformin acarbose uh, gliptins yeah new gliptins can produce no uh, another another difference to diagnose is functional um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome so what are the yes. classifications you get in ibs and diarrhea diarrhea predominant ibs do you know about the manning's um, criteria i i should read about it no manning's criteria and yes, also sir. what is rom4 criteria so rom4 criteria is patient has recurrent abdominal pain uh, for at least one day a week uh, which has been present for the last 3 months which is associated with at least uh, two or more that is uh, pain is related to defecation associated with change in frequency of stool and associated with change in the form or appearance of stool and these should be uh, should have been present for the last 3 months with symptom onset be, being present for at least 6 months or more so before the diagnosis you said case. about uh, weight loss no so he yes, is sir. having about 18 kg weight loss so what are the reason why which yes, they, this patient gain uh, re, uh, reason why they get significant uh, weight loss so so possibility is for sig such a significant weight loss one nutritional sir yeah um then other things that we need to consider is uh, uh any uh, malignancy yeah. history of uh, tuberculosis what are the um, malignancies so malignancies in this particular patient or uh, that uh, 18 kg weight loss so yes sir so in this particular patient with these symptoms uh, possibilities would be one any colonic uh, malignancy colonic malignancy um, then uh, uh, then uh, lymphoma or yeah. ipsid ipsid small bowel lymphoma okay suppose small a patient is having celiac disease significant weight loss yes, what sir. are the possibilities uh also yes uh, so thyroid any endocrine uh, issues celiac disease associated with thyroid dysfunction so what are the complications of celiac disease that can present as significant weight loss uh so uh, uh they have a predisposition again to develop eat uh, enteropathy associated t cell lymphoma which can present with significant weight loss or ultra jejunalitis uh, or collagenous proof so they can also develop collagenous also proof yes. So now, how will you classify this diarrhea? Um, in this patient, sir. Yeah, in this patient. So in this patient, I would probably I it's it's a chronic uh chronic diarrhea. Uh, I would label it as an inflammatory uh Why? Why diarrhea. Why inflammatory? Um, inflammatory because he has he he has uh, the presence of there is history of uh. presence of blood and mucus in stool there is history of fever uh abdominal so, pain so you think it is inflammatory diarrhea yes i would uh, consider yeah. inflammatory okay. diarrhea so suppose if it is inflammatory diarrhea what are your differential diagnosis yes so um at this point differential diagnosis uh, definitely inflammatory bowel disease um probably crohn's disease over ulcerative colitis um then other possibility why why, why would be uh, why crohn's disease not also uh, because right? pain 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 being more prominent uh then he does have uh, features of uh, uh more of a small bowel uh, suggestive of some small bowel involvement or uh, central pain um okay um blood and mucus i mean that it could be present with uh, rectal involvement also but again a uh, uh, presence of blood in stools blood and mucus in stools so uh, and and also weight loss significant uh, such a weight loss would be more commonly seen with crohn's disease than ulcerative colitis okay so um any other infectious infectious uh, etiology yes so uh, then other possibilities infectious under infectious uh, tuberculosis is also another um uh, etiology that i would uh, keep in my list of differentials there are, um, there are other infections there are certain uh, 
symptoms in this patient for TB? That, what are what are the symptoms you are mentioning? The main, so mainly the significant uh, significant weight loss, evening rise of temperature, uh, is what would uh, make me think of tuberculosis. So, uh, did you mention about any respiratory symptoms? Uh, yes, I ruled out uh, uh, any uh, respiratory symptoms. Ruled out, symptoms. Yeah, but no, you cannot rule out, no, because it's no, as in, uh, no, there is, uh, sorry, I, I, the, there was no, uh, uh, there's no history of any uh, dyspnea. Hemoptysis, all those things you have to say, you know, cough, uh, yes, sir. hemoptysis, and he had evening rise of yes. temperature. Any other infectious evening disease? Evening rise of temperature, yes. Any other infection? The other disease? possibilities would be uh, clos uh, C. Diff uh, clostridium difficile, sir. Yeah. Um, then yersinia, um, uh, uh, so and uh, so bacterial would be uh, tu tuberculosis, uh, clostridium difficile, yersinia, uh, viral infections, uh, uh, commonly that can present like is this. We have uh, CMB. Clostridium difficile usually present with bleeding PR or it is diarrhea. So diarrhea, but they can have uh, usually of the usually blood of the mucosa, be there. They can usually blood won't yes, be there. Sir. Yes, sir. Have you heard about Ersinia? Yes, sir. Yersinia and Trocantica. Ersinia, how, how it presents? So, Yersinia also, it, it presents as a pseudopend. It can mimic appendicitis. Hmm. So, it's, uh, they can also present with complaints of fever, abdominal pain, vomiting. Uh, it is also an entrocolitis. Uh, right. Entrocolitis, yes, sir. Okay. Any other differential diagnosis? Um, then uh, GI uh, lymphoma, sir. So what about uh, small bowel lymphoma? Uh, eosinophilic colitis. Eosinophilic, eosinophilic, uh, eosinophilic enteritis. Yes, sir. Eosinophilic enteritis. Uh, they can. Uh, they also have. They can present with uh, features of uh, diarrhea. Um, diarrhea, and occasionally they can have uh, blood in stools, but uh, fever. I'm not sure if. Uh, Okay, so any other uh, viral infections which can produce a, di a diarrhea like this, chronic diarrhea? So CMV, uh, CMV colitis, HSV, uh, HIV. Okay. Um, what about parasitic infections? What are the parasitic infections you think about? So parasitic infections uh, commonly uh, would uh, strong iloid, uh, GRDR. What more, more common? Um, Amoebic, amoebic, amoebic colitis. Amoebiasis. 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 Why uh, uh, diagnosing amoebiasis is very important or strong colitis is very important in uh, uh, if you suspect inflammatory bowel disease? Why why should it be? So because uh, before, because when we start steroids, usually uh, if uh, when they present with a flare, uh, usually we start with steroids. So if we start steroids without ruling out a parasitic infection, it can be to a flare and of uh, the parasitic infection. Okay. Vasculitis. It can cause fulminant colitis. Fulminant yeah. colitis. Fulminant colitis. Yeah. If you're going to start the patient on steroids. Okay, then yes, sir. can it be a vasculitis? What are the vasculitis? Yes, sir. Vasculitis, vasculitis is also, yes, sir, uh, small vessel vasculitis, or Bechet's uh, disease, or uh, PAN. What is the clinical also... presentation of Bechet's disease? So, Bechet's disease, they present with recurrent oral ulcerations, uh, genital ulcerations with. Uh, 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 with discom, uh, they have a, a discomating uh, skin, lymphadenopathy, uh, cervical lymphadenopathy, and a rash. They can also have the person with the uh, chronic colitis. And a colitis. Yes. So, what are the malignancies you suspect here? So, malignancies. Um. um so colonic malignancy, small bowel lymphoma, then uh, neuroendocrine tumors. So what are the uh, neuroendocrine why, tumors why like suspect, carcinoid? Why do you suspect colonic malignancy in this patient? So mainly because of uh, the significant uh, weight loss history of uh, fever, significant weight loss, fever, and uh, fever is colonic malignancy a, can also usually present. Usually not a presentation of a colonic malignancy. No, fever is not a. Okay. But he has blood in the stool. He has significant yes, weight sir. loss. Sig weight loss. Age above 50. I think you should consider. What is the presentation of Ipsit? So 
so uh, ipsid uh, predominantly it's a proximal small bowel involvement um they present with a significant weight loss um they have malabsorption features of um, second person with malabsorption uh, so we discussed about this uh, the causes of inflammatory diarrhea now what is your first differential diagnosis uh, my first differential i would still like to keep it as uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, possibly crohn's disease sir any other differential diagnosis um then other than that i would like to rule out a uh, tb um a drug induced colitis since there is history of uh, um intake of painkillers drug induced colitis is also something uh, and uh, then of what course the, what's uh, the point against drug induced colitis here or so he had symptom onset was there initially was symptoms had started prior to drug onset drug intake um and uh, history the uh, fever again drug called drug induced colitis will not present with uh, they would not have fever history of fever okay, but some drugs can produce drug fever no fever is yes, actually sir. but but weight loss what about the weight loss yes yes sir that is it will not that's very unusual about 18 20 kg weight loss no? yes sir when the madam any any comments Hindi में मारी थे। Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I think most of the differentials have been discussed nicely. I think uh, first differential she said was IBD. In that, what was it? Crohn's or ulcerative colitis? What was it? She told the Crohn's disease. Uh, so Crohn's. I mean, you you'd like to keep the other differential or just hang on to Crohn's as Crohn's colitis? No, no. As a differential, as my first differential, I would like to. Keep. I would like to keep Crohn's as my first differential, ma'am. What are your second, second and third? Then uh, tuberculosis, um, and in infective etiology. Um, Why and, not ulcerative uh, colitis? You see, is ruled out. Huh? Yes, I'm. Uh, see, no, no uh, yes, I'm. Uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, but I'm uh, Crohn's. I would uh, keep Crohn's over ulcerative colitis. If you have to differentiate between the two, what will be the prevalence of? Uh, how often do you get a Crohn's colitis as an isolated colitis? Um, in uh, less common, than twenty no? percent. Uncommon. Uncommon. Yes, it is less yes, than twenty yes, percent. Yes, yeah, in fact, most of the times it's in combination. Yes, ma'am. And then yes, you have to explain the fever. You have to explain the weight loss. So, is there a component of small bowel also in this patient? Because patient is uh, having more like uh, malabsorption, like presentation. There seems to be a combination of small intestine and large intestine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you. So what do you think it is? Crohn's, ileitis with colitis, uh, or Crohn's, I. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Crohn's, ileitis <clears throat> with uh, colitis. Okay, but, uh, I think the discussion, sir, has discussed almost all the points for differential. So I think. You have to keep a wide differentials in this patient. No, what about CVID? Yes, ma'am. CVID and immune oh, deficiency yes. state. This yes, is not helpful because it's the probability only thing that is almost the performance scale is almost the uh, three or four, I think. Yes, ma'am. Uh, performance uh, scale is three, ma'am. What is a clinical presentation? Common variable immune deficiency. That is what my madam is asking. So they'll have recurrent. They'll have recurrent history of recurrent infections. Uh, what infections? Uh, respiratory infections. Yeah. Uh, sinopulmonary infection. The current sinopulmonary infection. And they are prone to develop uh, to get which which infection? Mm. Which is the most common infection?
you have to you have to keep this immunocompromised state and uh, CVID also is a differential. And in that category, yes, the only thing you, uh, the the bloody stool that is there in this patient, maybe he has dual pathology that we do not know. I think we can move on from here on. Can we ask the, uh, can we yeah. ask the other discussions also to give the differential diagnosis? And Dr. Sudhi has done a very good presentation. I want to congratulate you. It was a very detailed and meticulous presentation. I think two two things I just want to add that if you are just said, what do you feel about the uh, Bristol stool chart like appearance of the stool as described by the patient? Patient won't be knowing the Bristol stool chart, but you will be able to guess what is approximate BCS. And if you say that, you may get additional points. Also, the W. COG performance status. Although you mentioned in great detail about yes, the sir. performance status, if you have mentioned that word, uh, probably you would have got a little more edge. Okay, you would have got that. That would have made it complete. Okay. And you have, you have given a very impressive negative negative history. Can you just go show that slide? Yes. Sir. For the benefit of all those who are attending. Yes. Uh, yes, and, yes, okay. So uh, yes. uh, on the right panel, uh, you start from oral ulcers. So you tell us what is the yes, relevance uh, of each of no that pain. negative. No oral ulcer, retinas itching. So what are you meaning? Or Sorry, what sir. you are trying to roll out? Oral. Because why so, uh, I am asking diagnosis is that because some of the examiners specifically catch you when you say negative points. And sometimes if the negative points are yes, irre sir. irrelevant to the case, they will be not very happy. So I just want others to learn from this exercise. Okay. So start from the no oral ulcers. What you are what are it what were you trying to yes, roll out? Sir. So oral ulcers, uh, even our uh, IBD can uh, they can have history of retinal oral ulcers and yes, Bechet's disease okay. they have history of like, uh, oral. Okay. Bechet's disease they tend Bechet's to have oral disease. ulcers. Okay. Um, then, deficiencies, uh, no? B vitamin nutritional deficiencies. Nutritional deficiencies, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so sir. this okay. Even Crohn's can. Then uh, redness. Uh, local Crohn's disease also can very rarely produce disease of the tongue as well as the buccal mucosa, and that can also produce ulcer. So that is regarding ulcer. Redness or itching in the eyes. What were you trying to? So on? again, uh, I was uh, in, in for uh, towards extra intestinal manifestations of IBD, uveitis, neuritis, uh, uh, eye manifestations the in uh, and uveitis. You were trying to roll on. and other. Other connective tissue, okay, if we're considering a vasculitis. Is, okay. okay, skin lesion you have mentioned, genital ulcers. Okay, paresthesia, tingling, numbness, whatever you're trying to roll out. So, neurological manifestations, um, so multiple things. One, nutritional deficiencies okay. because of I any nutrition, B12 deficiency, uh, deficiency uh, plus, uh, thymine deficiency. Plus, then, uh, people with Bacher's disease also, also known to have neurological symptoms. Yes. They seem to have a lot of neurological yes. symptoms and signs. Okay. Flushing, okay, we understand. Uh, Hyperpigmentation, malpitation. What, what is the relevance of chest pain, breathlessness? Um, so chest pain, uh, breathlessness, uh, cardiac involvement. So cardiac, uh, 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 one, if uh, the patient has, since there is history of bleeding PR, if there was any component of uh, congestive cardiac failure secondary to anemia, and Too other than that, um, no? yeah. but, uh, but the there, was no, there was no uh, uh, exertional yeah. breathlessness, no? So probably that was a little no, uh, a little extra, uh, probably that was not needed. If the patient has no breathlessness, uh, then there is no point in bringing those things. Travel, what is the relevance of travel? So travel or traveler's diarrhea? Um, travel to which place? Uh, where? Uh, travel where? No, uh, endemic, uh, depending on the endemic, endemicity. Uh, okay, but uh, like depending on the area of travel, yeah, so whether Travelers' diarrhea is usually acute diarrhea, no? This is chronic diarrhea with weight loss. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, do you think this is, uh, uh, is travel involved in any other diarrhea? Travelers' diarrhea one? Sorry, sir? Uh, any, any other way in which uh, travel can produce uh, uh, diarrhea? One is travelers' diarrhea, agreed. Okay, he's already residing in a tropical country. Uh, as per the definition of tropical, yes, uh, visit to a tropical country with uh, um, uh, uh, tropical sprue, etc. is one of the reasons uh, told to be uh, for tropical sprue. But he's already living in a tropical country. Yes, sir. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's already a resident. 
Okay, so that doesn't matter. Yes, History sir. antibiotics, okay, radiation exposure, fine. History of tuberculosis or TB contact. How often you find that history in a patient with the intestinal tuberculosis? No, not, not very common, sir. Okay, one third. Uh, as per the available literature, it is all literature, up to one third person may have a past history of tuberculosis. What about the current history of tuberculosis? Current tuberculosis with the GI illness, how, how many percentage? It is less than 20 percent. That you occur in ulcerative form of tuberculosis. When there is a, when, when the patient has got active open tuberculosis, they develop not the ulcerative constrictive type or the hypertrophic type. They mainly develop purely ulcerative form of tuberculosis of the intestine. That is observation. Okay. So these are the uh, things I just want to add. Can we invite the other two uh, discuss? Uh, uh, yeah. Dr. Viti and Dr. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, don't have so many no's, you know. Yeah, negatives should not be yeah. too many. The, the, these no's, you just have to say, just pertaining to your patient, the important no's. See, you had bloody okay, diarrhea, now you're saying no PR bleed. You know, and you just have to say extra intestinal manifestations, including perianal symptoms. That finishes off the whole thing and nutritional deficiencies. That is okay. all that you need in this patient. Okay. If you keep on saying in okay. your presentation, no history, no history, no history, you know what the examiner will say? You will say, what yes, is the present history, doctor? We've forgotten what is the yes, present sir. because there are too many no's. And uh, I mean, Not if enough, someone yes, there, was a, there was a history of radiation, it will come up in your present history. It will come yes, up in your present history. So when it's not there, you need not bring in that. In your notes, okay. you can write it down that you've taken the history. Because if it is present, okay, it's there. And sim similarly, jaundice yes, and itching. If jaundice and all are huge, strong, objective symptoms, you know. So if it is present, then yes, jaundice will be present. In this particular patient, yes, you will not say no issue of jaundice or itching. I, I hope you're understanding what I'm trying okay, to convey. Some of yes, these symptoms, yes, they will manifest. And, and yes, uh, either you see it objectively while examining or it is there. So in this particular case, I'm yes, really not saying no issue of jaundice or itching. You want to take a PSC as a differential. Yes, there is too, it is too vast and bizarre, you know. Hang on to the patient. Yes, Just hang on to the case. Supposing you have to see this yes, case in the outpatient clinic and finish off your diagnosis in 15 minutes. I think that, should, that is the art. Okay. Okay, continue. Yes, so the moral of the story is that the negative history should be highly relevant to the symptoms or that you are differential diagnosis. Okay. It should not be straying yes. into other territory because examiners will catch you on that and you waste your valuable time to defend for those things when you have a lot of uh, things to defend in the main case aspect. Okay. So that is uh, our humble suggestion. Yes. And can we call the two uh, other person, Dr. Anup? Uh, sir, please, can please tell you the diagnosis? diagnosis. We are telling you, if you have any stories, you can ask. Please tell us uh, your differential diagnosis in your order of priority. If you have got any queries, uh, you can ask now. My first order of priority will be uh, tuberculosis because of history of loss of weight of 18 kg associated with the evening rise of temperature, uh, which can be more uh, of tuberculosis, followed by an infectious etiology, uh, then uh, Crohn's colitis and ulcerative colitis. Uh, then uh, all the uh, relatively less diagnosis like um, uh, eosinophilic enteritis, NSAID, enteropathy. Also, here, um, um, I, any chances of any segmental ischemia in this age group uh, or recurrent diverticulitis, but the chances of 18 kg weight loss in both things are very less. So is there any other DD for you? You said about tuberculosis, IBD, uh, and uh, uh, many other things. Uh, some uh, some infectious diarrhea, segmental colitis, any other cause for a significant weight loss with the colonic uh, symptoms? Yeah. Infections itself, uh, paracapillariasis. Um, but then you have to uh, decide whether the patient has a small bowel diarrhea or large bowel diarrhea. I think I, we have, we the have narrowed down to mainly predominantly colonic diarrhea, no? The patient is predominantly uh, the patient uh, having both 18 kg weight loss uh, with the malabsorption, uh, malnutrition finding. So most probably the patient will be having both the small bowel and large bowel symptoms. What because was, large bowel. I want to interrupt. What was the say, features of what was the feature of malabsorption in this patient? Patient has got a diarrhea which is uh, small in volume as I understand. Malnutrition, sir. Malnutrition. And weight 18, loss. 
18 kg weight loss minus 18 kg weight loss is there agreed but that does not mean that we have to immediately make a diagnosis of malabsorption malnutrition sorry sir malnutrition so what malnutrition means what are, what are you trying to drive at what do you mean by malnutrition patient is not eating therefore is losing weight or is not uh, absorbing the nutrients what was in your mind you have to be very special you are a, a super special trainee so you cannot be vague on this you have to be very specific but exactly you wanted to tell not absorption of nutrients that means mal absorption so you are telling there is mal absorption see that means it is small bowel disease so you, you know you can't just say there is all this because we have already narrowed down the possibility of a predominant large bowel disease Okay. okay. Once you say predominant large bowel disease, you may say there could be an additional small bowel involvement and okay. escape something. But if you okay. suddenly bring in a uh, predominantly small bowel disease uh, and say there is malabsorption, things will be difficult because as per Dr. Sudhir's history, uh, I think uh, Dr. Sudhir gave a fairly good history of a colonic type of diarrhea, small in volume, many times, increased frequency, so many things were yes, there. Sir, yes, sir. And yes, some blood in the stools, finally, some maroon color, etc. Blood in the stools also. Will you consider yes, malignancy? Uh, malignancy uh, in this age group is possible uh, with uh, uh, small bowel lymphomas and uh, colloidic malignancy, but already it is mentioned that a colonoscopy was done somewhere uh, and nothing was found. Okay, but when you discuss that colonoscopy, <laughs> could be wrong also. Uh, okay, luckily, sir. unlike uh, so the, the, if that colonoscopy is incomplete and the person missed the diagnosis, or they could be thinking of uh, uh, tuberculosis or inflammatory bowel disease, wrong diagnosis, biopsy was uh, falsely negative. There have been many situations where malignancy, you take biopsy and it turns out to be negative, and then you wrongly treat for various conditions and patient come back later with florid symptoms. Okay. But I think malignancy, significant weight loss, as uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, I think um, malignancy... Uh, neoplastic manifestation can be taken as fever. So a a, a colorectal neoplasm which can metastasize to different parts of the body and can develop significant weight loss. So advanced malignancy, <coughs> lymphoma, affecting the colon, ileocecal region or any part of the colon can again present with uh, uh, colonic type of symptoms with uh, again weight loss. Uh, yes, HIV. Sir. HIV is another right. condition. Even though there is no high-risk behavior, patient may not tell you the right story, okay, unless you probe properly. So, HIV is to be kept in mind. Okay, so, yes, significant weight loss is the dominant picture in this patient. So, yes, that, that, cannot be, can, that cannot be ignored. I think to bring in malabsorption uh, because in the absence of a good history will be a little difficult to accept. Okay. okay. Can I ask okay. the doctor, Naveen Chand, what do you okay. think my first differential diagnosis will be iliac colonic Crohn's disease, sir, followed by ulcerative colitis, followed by intestinal TB, followed by colorectal cancer, followed by HIV, sir, with some okay. invasive, invasive infections. Okay, you think that HIV with uh, additional, uh, additional some okay, invasive infections, sir. bacteria or some other infection, parasite. Okay. okay, I think that's a fairly good list of things. Uh, over to Professor Shine. Yeah, you can go ahead, actually. Okay. <coughs> so, um, the past history, uh, he, uh, patient has a past history of uh, type 2 diab uh, diabetes mellitus. Uh, he's been a diabetic for the last uh, five to six years. Currently, on uh, he's been on treatment with insulin. And also, he gives history of uh, being diagnosed as a hypothyroid uh, four to five years ago, but currently, he's not on treatment. Um, personal history, there's no history of habituation to alcohol or tobacco. Uh, family history, there's no similar complaints uh, in the family members. Uh, there's no family history of colorectal cancer or hepatobiliary malignancies in the family. There's no family history of TB. Now, uh, coming to dietary history, patient consumes a mixed diet. Uh, uh, he also gives, he consumes dairy, pro dairy products. He used to consume meat and beef in the past, but he stopped uh, consuming uh, meat over the last two months. Now, uh, uh, since his symptoms started, his diet has predominantly been restricted to consumption of rice, idli, apam, dosa, dal, vegetables, uh, and eggs. Uh, for his uh, calorie intake, his total current calorie intake was around 1,700 kilocalories and protein intake is around 30 grams uh, with a calorie deficit of around uh, 500 kilocalories and a protein deficit of 30 grams. <laughs> So 
this patient is having diabetes so what are the yes, uh, signs of um, autonomic uh, neuropathy in the history wise so autonomic uh, neuro so autonomic neuropathy history wise they can give history of uh, flushing uh, postural postural dizziness history of uh, diaphoresis inadvertent sweating history of palpitation um uh, incontinence urinary symptom yes anything else uh and then uh, motility uh, they can have uh, they can have altered bowels because of uh, motility uh, gas uh, motility disorder yeah, they can also have motility. sometimes no they can have inappropriate heart rate uh, uh, also palpitations so are, yeah palpitations okay, okay. go ahead ियंटेड he his weight was 55 kg he had a height of 160 cm bmi was 21.1 um uh, uh vitals his pulse was 100 per minute pulse was regular normal in volume and character uh, there was no radio uh, uh there was no radio radial delay radio femoral delay all peripheral pulses were palpable uh blood pressure was 110 by 70 mm of mercury recorded in the right arm and supine position uh um uh, other head to foot examination uh pallor was present uh, minimal pitting pitting pedal edema at the level of the ankle was present there was no ictus no clubbing no lymphadenopathy uh, jvp was not elevated there were no signs of dehydration there was no uh, bite or spots no chymosis petechiae or bony tenderness there were no oral ulcers glossitis stomatitis or genital ulcers um there was uh, no skin changes like there was no dry dry or scaly uh, scaly skin there was no hyperpigmentation what are the co- Now, causes uh, of clubbing to... sorry uh, what are the causes of clubbing uh, with a so clubbing chronic in... diarrhea so with chronic diarrhea uh, so inflammatory bowel disease they can have clubbing then uh, because of malignancy uh, ipsid they can have clubbing um uh hyperthyroidism if they present uh, no, i think um uh, the informa is tb or uh, tuberculosis tuberculosis first is tuberculosis with complications tb yes sir. what are the oral manifestations of uh, of the Uh, inflammatory uh, bowel disease what are the oral manifestations uh, so, so they can have uh, oral ulcers they can have stomatitis uh, they can have pigmentation oh. what is that called stomatitis uh, stomatitis what is that called pyo um sorry for that minor of this major of the or pyo stomatitis vegetans pyo other extra intestinal yeah. manifest you are going into the extra intestinal manifest or this is the last line no the sir general ex- examination this okay. is all that i have so what are the other extra intestinal manifestations of inflammatory bowel disease um so so they can have uh, episcleritis scleritis uveitis yeah. uh, they can have arthralgias yeah. uh, then uh, they can have uh, skin changes eczema nodosum pyodoma gangrenosum um what are the what are the types of pyg- pyoderma gangrenosum sir uh, there are three types bullous pustular and vegetative what are the common sites of this pyoderma gangrenosum the most common most commonly it is uh, seen on uh, the extensor uh, extensor surface uh, under normally one gives example not peristomal also you can get any other conditions uh, yes sir uh, other where, where you can get pyoderma gangrenosum um so ibd uh, polycythemia vera uh, myelodysplastic syndrome yeah. myelodysplastic syndrome and polycythemia vera yes. what about pigmentation tb sorry pigmentation sir pigmentation and diarrhea uh, chronic diarrhea 
the pigmentation and chronic diarrhea pigmentation uh, can occur because of nutritional deficiency uh, b12 deficiency uh, even niacin deficiency they can have hyperpigmentation um, then other than that uh, because of uh, in celiac disease they can have dermatitis uh, herpetiformis uh then in addison's disease addison's disease good then um carcinoids carcinoids what about whipple's disease you can have pigmentation over the light exposed areas in whipple's disease okay sir what are the oral manifestation because chronic diarrhea is one of the manifestation of hiv no what are the oral manifestations yes, of hiv oral manifestation um sir uh, they can have um sub uh, kaposi sarcoma hairy cell they can have hairy yeah, cell kaposi sarcoma uh, most common site of kaposi sarcoma in the mouth um the heart palate the heart okay any other thing any other findings oral manifestations in hiv uh, candidiasis oral Very candidiasis oral uh, candidiasis okay then uh, oh then erythroplakia leukoplakia okay why do they develop jogren oh. syndrome secondary jogren syndrome so because of uh, the lymphocytic uh, yeah. because of the salivary glands so there's a lymphocytic infiltration of the salivary glands leading to secondary jogren yeah they can also develop any other complications there is a acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis this is another manifestations in hiv acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis yes so what about the, the, if the patient presents with a, a thyroid swelling and a, a lymphadenopathy what what could be the cause yes sir so medullary carcinoma thyroid can also present with uh, diarrhea medullary carcinoma thyroid okay any specific finding for amelodos some of the infiltrative diseases can present with present with diarrhea no so what are the the, yes, the manif- skin and oral manifestations of amelodosis you look for so amelodosis they can present with raccoon eyes they have thin fragile or their skin is uh, thin so they can have bruises uh in the skin classical Easy. finding in the eyelid uh, what is it called macroglossia so raccoon eyes panda eyes macroglossia very good then macroglossia anything else Waxy papules. Yeah, waxy papules. What is shoulder pad sign? It, uh, there's in uh, uh, asymmetry of the shoulder because of. Uh, yeah, and over the eyelids, the classical finding. If you see that, that immediately diagnose. Panda sign. So the raccoon eyes. Panda. Peri peri orbital purpura. Yes. And any other uh, purpura, you know. classical of amelodosis not waxy sure, so papules and pinch purpura so these are the, the classical findings that you will see in amelodosis lymphadenopathy yes. what are the situation conditions where you get lymphadenopathy with chronic diarrhea oh the channel dp the tuberculosis bacterial disease yeah. lymphomas Whipple's disease. Okay. Other dermatological manifestations you specifically look for in glucagonoma. What do you get? Oh. Migrate and necrotizing. Oh. Accumulating migrate. Necrotizing. What's the right? Articular pigmentosa. Where will you get? Mastocytosis. Mastocytosis. How will you differentiate between episcleritis and scleritis? Pain, sir. Pain is present. Um, so episcleritis pain. is not as painful as scleritis. Yeah, episcleritis, you have like mild pain. Good. Then. Yes, sir. Uh, then, then it, um, uh, vision. There's a uh, pain that ocular movement is seen with scleritis. Very good. The, when the there along with the movement of the 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 ocular movement, we have severe movement. pain, and then. most important thing and also vision of uh, yeah. vision will be affected in scleritis in scleritis <coughs> and uh, scleritis most of the time it is self limited 
rhinitis pigmentosa sorry retinitis retinitis pigmentosa <clears throat> what yes. is the association with chronic diarrhea um sir uh, abetal lipoproteinemia and retinitis uh, yeah, abetal lipoproteinemia okay vargis sir and jendi madam i think uh, an uh, exhaustive uh, list of uh, general examination findings have been covered uh, i think we can proceed yes sir i will i will start by yes, the yes. bmi in this thing, the way you described i thought his bmi would only be 14 yes. the way you described you know yes. Yes. bedridden bedridden and you said he's not able to walk how is his bmi 21 madam how do you explain lower this? weight when you like none of like none of us have seen the case you know So when you were yes, describing, right. I was just imagining one one emaciated character lying in the bed. You know, then I find that the yes, BMI is twenty one, being fifty five. Was he obese? Was he obese and he's lost oh. so much weight? He is not uh, uh, possibly, ma'am, because right now he is not ema- he doesn't look emaciated. So how would you ask the question? Oh, you, oh, he's not emaciated, is yes, it? Yes, I should have asked so him that. Then you should not give such a detailed description as though he's totally bedridden and not able to move. Is immobile. No, but he is. Man, actually, <laughs> actually, I have seen this patient. No, basically, initially when he this uh, person was admitted, he had uh, hypokalemia. He was actually having anemia. His hemoglobin dropped to six in in hospital. So that time, actually, they saw the patient was very sick, bedridden at that point of time. He was actually oh, then, hypokalemia. Then they can mention that, sir. Yeah, they can yeah. mention. I mean, yes, at the time of examination, now he's much better, so yeah. they can modify the history to say that okay. while his performance stage improved okay, from ma'am. stage three to now he's almost zero, and that you should tell how is yes, it, ma'am. how did it happen that the performance stage from three became zero? So what was it the treatment yes, that did the trick? Was it the diet that did the trick? So and and what was the interval between the time when he was really sick? And in what period of time he became well? I think that information, if you give, no, then we are in the same process of thinking. Okay, yeah? ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. <coughs> And uh, one thing is just I want to ask is that there is uh, on physical examination there is pedal edema. Did the patient uh, say that yes, in the sir. history or is it a mild pedal edema? No, so it was only uh, up to the ankle. There was mild sitting pedal edema, sir. So. Okay. Uh, it was not given in the history, sir. Okay. Please proceed. So, um, proceeding with uh, systemic examination, uh, beginning with uh, examination of uh, the GIT, uh, for abdomen on inspection, there was no skin pigmentation, no scars, sinuses. There, there was no abdominal distension. Uh, abdomen was symmetrical. There was no flank fullness. All quadrants moved equally with uh, respiration. The umbilicus was central uh, and uh, Uh, everted there is no visible peristalsis or pulsation hernial size is normal on inspection uh, on palpation infectious findings were confirmed um, abdomen was uh, soft uh, there was no guarding or rigidity uh, mild tenderness was uh, felt on the deep palpation in the umbilical region um, there was no palpable organomegaly there was no palpable uh, mass or uh, that was felt um, hernial size uh, were normal Uh, on percussion, uh, there was no free fluid. Uh, on auscultation, bowel sounds were heard. Uh, per rectal examination, uh, there was no fistula, abscess, or fissure. Uh, sphincter tone was normal. And other systemic examinations were within normal limits. Yes, ma'am. If you if you have a lung involvement, uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, uh, okay. So, what are the other systemic examination finding you expect? Suppose a it's twenty one hours a respiratory system. What are the the specific things you look for in this patient? Um. So, uh, uh, since TB is one of our differentials, uh, we would look for any evidence of uh, upper lobe consolidation. Uh, TB is consolidation. Uh, plural or... effusion evidence of any plural effusion consolidation. Um. Th- then uh you can see uh, around 25 to 30 percent can have coexistent lung lung involvement no? they can have fibrocavity disease yes sir so the, uh, yes sir 
volume loss of volume cavity yes sir cavity, cavity yes. and then fib uh, fibrosis cavity, cavity. Lesion, yes sir. we can have pleural effusion what are the neurological uh, findings you look for um neurological findings uh, any uh, evidence of uh, look for features of peripheral neuropathy um if uh, there is any sensory or uh, disturbance uh, uh, sensory loss if uh, there is uh, features of lower motor neuron uh, there is loss of reflexes um uh, for in terms of b12 deficiency uh, i would say if uh, there is an upwing plantar with uh, uh, with absent ankle uh, jerk to suggest uh, subacute combined degeneration <coughs> uh then higher mental functions to suggest if there is any dementia or or impairment of higher mental functions um cranial nerve involvement uh, would be important uh, to rule out if uh, there is a coexistence vasculitis the uh, whipple's disease presents with some of the neurological findings what are the two uh, important findings you expect so dementia There's neuropsychiatric involvement and so, oculo masticatory myorrhythmia. Have you heard about it? Oh yes, sir. And oculo skeletal myorrhythmia. These are classical findings that you get in Whipple's disease. Yes, sir. What are the ways by which uh, lung can be involved in Crohn's disease? um so if uh, if uh, since they are at a high risk of developing malignancy so met metastasis lung metastasis more than that no oh. see um, there are specific uh, lung findings that, uh, can which can occur in cd oh. it's bronchiectasis they can present they can present chronic bronchitis okay interstitial lung disease sometimes they may present with a necrotizing lung nodule so these are the okay. findings that you will see in in the lungs okay so after examination what what are your uh, uh, differential diagnosis so um after examination um, i would still uh, keep uh, inflammatory bowel, bowel disease as crohn's disease as my first differential uh followed by ulcerative colitis there is no obvious uh, features of any uh, malabsorption um uh secondly i would put tuberculosis um i think it would all stay the same sir my examination findings won't really change the differentials as so syndromic diagnosis so syndromic uh, so this, uh, this is a chronic uh, uh chronic inflammatory uh, diarrhea um uh, uh more probably uh, inflammatory uh, bowel disease involving uh, uh, uh i would put it in ileocolitis with uh, colonic involvement um no with no definite uh, features to suggest a fistulating or a, a stricturing disease um and uh, no structure so there is uh, there's no uh, there so he hasn't manifested manifested with obstructive symptoms which is why okay no strep uh, suggestive for intestinal obstruction okay yes sir madam um with a uh, background yes sir okay uh, what are the point you are telling uh with, no i think uh, with the background uh, history of uh, type 2 uh, with coexistent type 2 diabetes and uh, diabetes mellitus and hypothyroidism with a performance status of uh, ecog of 3 okay one of the things which probably we did not uh, discuss is that a person with a suspected ibd especially crohn's if the weight loss is uh, fairly sudden in onset and uh, profound development of a fistula mm -hmm. between high small intestine and lower part uh, like a colon is to be considered because that would explain okay. many other things which we are not able to explain otherwise 
ओके एन इंटरनल फिस्टुला डेवलपिंग बिटवीन स्मॉल बबल एंड लार्ज बबल इसलिए कि जजनो कॉलिक फिस्टुला और लिलियो कॉलिक फिस्टुला दैट कैन प्रोड्यूस प्रोफाउंड मेलब्सोर्प्शन एंड द फीचर्स मे बी एटिपिकल एंड इट विल बी फेयरली सडन आल्सो ओके सो इफ यू आर आस्क्ड अबाउट प्रोफाउंड वेट लॉस इन एन आईबीडी दैट कुड आल्सो बी मेंशनड एज अ कॉज I think uh, because uh, the physical examination has not made us much more wiser than what we thought. Uh, I think we have to think of investigation. Okay, so we can invite uh, Doctor uh, Anu uh, to tell us how to investigate this case. Uh, only after Doctor Anu uh, spelled spell out his uh, plan of investigation, we will show the results. So, is... sir, uh, basically, I want to first check into uh, complete blood count, including the hemoglobin. as there is a uh, uh, maroon colored uh, stool so uh, uh, into the hemoglobin then to the mcv whether uh, any b12 or folic acid deficiency is there uh, then to the platelet count any thrombocytosis yeah, is there uh, in uh, then i want to go to the uh, electrolytes in sodium and potassium because of chronic diarrhea the patient may be having hypokalemia or electrolyte imbalance uh, then to the uh, lft uh, just Want to know the alkaline phosphatase? Any more? Uh, any nutritional deficiency? Vitamin D, calcium associated deficiency. Also in blood, I would like to uh, look for the peripheral smear uh, to look for the type of anemia if it if at all it is uh, present. In also, LFT, I would like to. You are only interested in an interruption. In the in fact, uh, one should not say LFT because you are not doing the entire LFT. If you are doing okay. the entire LFT, you have to tell the reason. To tell okay. Liver, so also, liver entire bi- LFT. If any malignancy, any meds or. Okay. Uh, yeah. and better tell liver biochemistry it is safe oh, okay. nowadays okay, people sir. don't use the term lft to LFT. say okay. liver biochemistry okay, okay sir so uh, you have to look for uh, proteins and albumin why oh yes yes sir yes sir albumin also hypoalbuminemia any protein losing is there uh, anyway there is fetal edema so uh, suspecting any uh, hypoalbuminemia is there then i want to look for the creatine uh, as i am planning to take a uh, um, contrast imaging then i would go for the stool examination which is uh, at most important in the stool examination i would like to uh, look for uh, the uh, uh, microbiology uh, the uh, gross examination the macroscopy and microscopy microscopy in uh, that any frothing blood and mucus in microscopy i would like to look for the ova cyst trophocyte larva uh also i would uh, like to rule out any uh, fat malabsorption uh, like uh, semi conductive trophocyte i want to interrupt in this two trophocyte of gyardia or trophocyte of gyardia and trophocyte of amoeba amoeba okay can you describe us uh, how it will look like under the microscope the gyardia it will be like falling leaf uh, uh, like pattern the motel trophocyte it will be what is the shape of the gyardia when you look at it you should have some idea leaf part it's like a round pardon um falling leaf yeah it is uh, it is uh, uh, related to fig leaf no uh, fig yes. leaf so falling leaf or fairly tennis racket or uh, that leaf shaped appearance and what about amoeba yes. what is the shape uh circular what is the typical description of amoeba to say that this amoeba is a cause for the disease you have to have a particular description and what is that i don't know right. sir you have to see live trophocyte in a yes, freshly sir. prepared saline mon preparation so saline mon preparation okay and stain yes. you have to see the live trophocyte with amoeba movement that is it actually moves it's not a con- it's a, it doesn't have a constant shape it's keep on moving putting up part of its body the pseudopodia okay so with ingest yes, rbcs inside it so hematophagus es trophocyte which are motile that is the usual classic uh, description yes, in a uh, saline mon preparation okay and what are, what are so the I'll... what are the strong layout okay strong layout strong alloy uh, then as uh, strong alloy cryptosporidiosis cryptosporidiosis Cryptospora. you can easily find out by light microscopy how do you okay yes. finish off the parasites and then we'll go to other things okay so ova of uh, uh, strong alloy sometimes you may find okay then trichuris trichura trichuris trichuria okay 
Yes, sir. What about other vowels like Ascaris, Lambricoids, and Enterobius, Vermicularis? If you see, how will you relate to this problem? Round by one, pin by If you find vowels in this patient, how do you relate to the illness? Uh, the bleeding uh, in this uh, may be a root to hook. Uh, it's unrelated because uh, roundworms are not known to produce uh, colitis. And uh, even pinworms doesn't produce colitis, but bookworms can produce that. Trichuris tricura, okay. Trichuris tricura, that is the correct pronunciation. That can produce, okay. Then yes, what yes. next in the stool? Uh, stool, I want to look for uh, what is the type of diarrhea also, whether it is secretory or osmotic. Other than the, uh, um, I finish with the la okay, larva okay, of bronchiolus. Also, Doctor Anu, let me interrupt. Let me interrupt. See, we have already agreed to the fact that this is a predominantly a large bowel diarrhea. Agreed. Okay, sir. Yes, At sir, that yes, point, sir. never ever bring in a small bowel diarrhea again. Yes, because yes, in, in the differential diagnosis of a large volume diarrhea only, we bring in secretory versus osmotic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So at this point, if you say this particular, I will do a test to differentiate secretory versus osmotic. I think the examiners will be really harsh at you. So uh, beware of these things. You, yes, sir. You yes, have sir. To be very careful about what comes out of your mouth. It has to be a studied, intelligent way of answering, not uh, yes, telling sir. out some random answers. I hope you understood. We are trying understood, to help you. We are trying to help you out. Okay, yes, so your answers must be uh, depending to the situation. It's not, I did not ask you, how will you do a stool examination? It was not a theory question. In this particular patient, what all things you will look in the stool? That is what we wanted. Okay, sir. Also, the larvae of strong aloids, uh, cryptosporidiosis, isospora. Okay, next question. How will you identify cryptospora, isospora, etc.? How will you identify cryptospora, cryptosporidium? What test is done? Uh, AFP. Uh, it is not acid first bacillus. That is for tuberculosis. It is seal nails and staining. The same Seal staining is used. So, but you have made a mistake. Yeah, you are not looking for the AFP in the stool by this technique. You are yes, doing sir. the same seal technique, needles. a concentration technique, and then seal nails and staining to detect the cryptosporidium. Okay, yes, don't sir. get confused. So you have yes, to know sir. each technique by which the tests are done. Okay. Various yes, techniques of doing uh, to identifying the okay. So, uh, so the concentration methods are there, special staining methods are there. Okay. Okay, sir. What what next? Then, uh, after that, I would like to look for the viral marker, especially the HIV one and two. Uh, other uh, after that, um, um, I would like to look for the diabetic control with the HbA one C. Okay. Uh, then I would uh, go for the uh, definitive investigation uh, with the uh, upper GA endoscopy and lower GA endoscopy and possible biopsy along with the uh, definitive imaging in the form of... So which one uh, do you want to do? Upper GA endoscopy or lower endoscopy? In this low, lower, low, definitely lower GA. Okay, so lower yes, and if needed upper. Okay, upper GA you don't want to do upper endoscopy. This patient had no upper GA symptoms at all. Uh, yes, sir. If it is any Crohn's disease, any uh, isolated, uh, means upper, uh, upper GA symptoms associated with the Crohn's disease, also I want to uh, okay. roll out. Okay, a small proportion of patient with the upper GAT involvement where you want to take a biopsy. Other than that, um, will you take a random biopsy from the stomach? Uh, In a case uh, where you are not able to... Uh, well, probably if you are not able to arrive at your diagnosis and upper G endoscopy and take biopsy from the stomach to look for focal enhanced inflammation. Focal enhanced, focal gastritis. enhanced gastritis. And sometimes if you are lucky, gastritis. you get But focal enhanced gastritis is what you find. So in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, in a theoretically, in a case of chronic diarrhea where you want to look for, uh, whether you want to look for the cause, you may take biopsy from the duodenum. Uh, to look for other diffuse small intestinal disease, you may aspirate fluid from the duodenum and uh, look for giardia and strong aloids because strong strong aloids. duodenum give you better yield compared to stool examination. Okay, so <coughs> biopsy from the duodenum, uh, uh, aspirate from the duodenum, biopsy from the stomach, and any specific lesion also you biopsy. So that is the indication for doing. Okay, uh, then of also course, I want to look for the fecal calprotectin also. Okay. When you do the, when you tell us uh, <coughs> the investigation, please follow some order. Don't randomly say, 
I will do that. I will do this. I will do that. Like, you know, you have okay, to follow sorry. certain orders. Okay, I will do bl blood test, the following test in the initial. Then I will do the stool test. Then I will do the scopy. Then I will do imaging. Like that, like that. That gives us that you are a person with sufficient practical experience. Okay. So okay, what sorry. imaging you will do? You said you want to do imaging when you said about creativity. CT. 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 What's CT? So CT. CT. Contrast enhanced the CT. Contrast enhanced CT of? Of uh, large bowel with a small bowel. Endrogram also. So you want to do only a plain CT or contrast enhanced CT or a CT endrography? Uh, endro with the small bowel, endrogra endrography. So I will say I will prefer MR endrography. How will you defend your statement? Um, uh, for uh, initial diagnosis, we can go for CT. If a uh, Crohn's disease and fistula, anything we are suspecting, we can, uh, any inflammatory or uh, fibrotic structure we are suspecting, we can go for our uh, pelvic uh, perianal uh, disease, we can go for MRI. Okay, uh, people do both uh, CT, either CT or MRI, but uh, as the initial screening, as you said rightly, CT of the abdomen with an enterography can be done. You may also study other organs as well. Okay, but if you require repeated studies uh, or a follow up studies, it would be preferable to do MR because radiation risk are less. But unfortunately, yeah. MR is not that freely available in many places, and interpretation also is difficult because of lack of uh, experts to uh, do and interpret uh, enterography. Okay. Of course, about pelvis and uh, for perianal disease, MRI uh, uh, is the test of choice because uh, MRI gives you a lot of information compared to CT. Over to Professor uh, Shine. Now you may uh, continue and uh, please uh, show him the investigations available with you. Uh, Dr. Sudhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll uh, share the investigation, sir. Yeah. Doctor, so, I know uh, to, uh, can we ask Dr. Anup to read through it so that uh, he will have to yes. give interpretation sure. also? Uh, sir, uh, there is. As you um, read through, give your interpretation, whether it is normal. Uh, or uh, total count is raised mostly because an inflammatory activity is going on the body with the neutrophil predominant. And there is definitely anemia, uh, which is substantiate our blood loss. And the MCV is raised maybe because of B12 deficiency. Platelet is somewhat, uh, platelet is normal. Uh, CRP is raised, definitely an inflammatory activity is going, going on in the body with the ESR also raised. The there is no, count, uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting in between because if the lymphocyte count is low, what is the possibility? Um, lymphocyte count. In a patient uh, chronic diarrhea. Intestinal any any inform, a lymphoma, it's it. Lymphangiectasia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So low lymphocyte count in chronic diarrhea, lymphangiectasia. Low lymphocyte, okay. Low lymphocyte, low lymphocyte count. Okay. okay. Okay, sir. Peripheral smear? Uh, peripheral smear is my not. No, suppose you uh, ask for a peripheral smear, no? So what finding yes, will guide uh, you? Either microcytic hypochromic anemia or microcytic anemia. Uh, yes, a peripheral smear done only to look for microcytic or microcytic or any other thing which can be found out in a chronic diarrhea case. We look for cytocytes to different to diagnose a beta lipoprotein. Yeah, what do you look for? Uh, echondocytes. 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 Yeah, echondocytes. Okay, fine. Good. Then eosinophilia. Uh, eosinophilic enteritis. Any eosinophilia. Uh, ESR is also raised and CRP is also raised. Uh, urea creatinine are normal, potassium 2.9 maybe because of diarrhea. Uh, albumin is low with AG reversal. Uh, AST, LP and ALP are normal and INR so, is normal. Uh, albumin low, what are the possibilities? Uh, either because of uh, protein losing or because of a chronic inflammatory stage. Negative phase reaction. Anything more? You said one, protein loss, two, chronic inflammation. One more, at least you should say. Intake um, can be low, no? Due to illness. Ah, yes, uh, low intake. So intake, loss, and chronic uh, uh, disease process. Okay. Lymphangiectasia also will have low, low albumin. Low. Globulin, low, globulin is low. Possibilities? Immunodeficiency state. Yeah. Which, which immunodeficiency? Um, because, see, sometimes now only globulin will be low. Uh, 
common variable yeah iga deficiency then common variable immunodeficiency so low globulin then you have to do the immunoglobulin level and see levels immunoglobulin will be also low in um like again lymphangiectasia lymphangiectasia okay sir why it all happens in lymphangiectasia dr anuk that the lymphocytes seem to be less uh, protein seem to be less uh, immunoglobulin seem to be less everything is in the uh, i am not sure sir hmm. navin due to the obstruction of the lymphatic vessels the all the proteins will be lost into the lumen sir causing hypovolemia and the lymph also will be lost so lymphopenia also will be lost. yeah lymph will be lost it is not it is not due to obstruction it is just lymphangiectasia yeah. that causes protein losing state it may not it mean there is no obstruction we are talking of uh, basic lymphangiectasia where there is just a protein losing state where you have loss of both albumin and globulin it is of like lymphoviruses you, you have lymphoma yeah. you have constrictive pericarditis also you can have a protein losing state but we are not discussing that okay yes ma'am okay next okay you are on the right panel top some more tests are there uh, uh tft is normal ceramine is low ferritin is raised maybe inflammatory tibc 118 hiv hbcg and it's cvr non reactive okay next next slide dr sudhi so the stool macroscopic appearance consistency is loose stool yellow blood is nil mucus is nil microscopic appearance wbc is nil rbc is nil parasites no uh, no parasites see no findings by uh, water stool culture bar closed gradient difficile assay is negative upper gi endoscopy uh, duodenal diverticulate <clears throat> what assay you do for closed gradient difficile closed gradient difficile uh, gdh and uh, stool closed gradient difficile toxin a and b if both both are positive then it is positive either one of is negative you can do nucleic acid amplification test okay apogee endoscopy you know what is there is one finding in apogee endoscopy in crohn's disease what is that um apogee endoscopy bamboo joint like bamboo joint like appearance okay sir so if you see because uh, a very interesting uh, um, case report was there they have given infleximab and then after infection of they checked and it was a surprise it was seen that this bamboo joint appearance disappeared okay sir okay sir. and then why do you want to take biopsy one is actually uh -huh. sir has already uh, discussed focal 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 enhanced gastritis anything else gastritis also uh, uh, chronic diarrhea gyadiasis strongyloid no, granuloma See, in, a, in a case it is granuloma because sometimes you know you may not get granuloma in the colon to a surprise we may get a granuloma so you should take a biopsy from the from the stomach also to look for a granuloma there okay. because a granuloma is there then you the, can confidently diagnose tuberculosis sorry um, crohn's disease okay. crohn's disease and then uh, when you take a d2 biopsy no yes sir so uh, what are the, uh, the the diagnostic possibilities and from a d2 uh, you can get um, a diagnosis of infection like gyadia strongyloid uh, cryptosporidia cyclospora cytomegalovirus also uh, small bowel diarrhea conditions also we can diagnose like diphtheria celiac tropical sprue okay so celiac this is where will you take biopsy d2 biopsy yeah, d2, d2 biopsy how many biopsies you take um at least 4 to 6 from 4 to 6 4 to 6 okay yeah, good 4 to 6 from d2 d3 and also you should take d2. biopsy from the bulb yes d sir. what is bulb yeah duodenal bulb what, what is the problem with taking a biopsy from the bulb because you can have this architectural uh, tectal uh, distortion orientation the branner's gland okay. Okay. okay and then the gastric heterotropia will be there more in d1 so these are the problems so where, from where will you take a, a biopsy for a tropical sprue uh d2 yeah beyond d2 it's not d2 third and 
fourth part of duodenum whipple's okay. disease where will you take i'm not sure sir distal duodenum and jejunum okay so for a celiac disease four to six biopsies from d2 d3 and duodenum bulb whereas in case of tropical flu third and fourth a part of duodenum whipple's disease beyond that that is distal duodenum beyond jejunum 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 what are the conditions where you get scalloping uh it can be uh, in celiac disease tropical flu amelodosis sibo um gyadiasis uh, lymphangiectasia yeah hiv andropathy so the hiv andropathy is nephilic enteritis okay go ahead sudhi okay now we will ask dr navin मल्टीपल Thermal helium showed multiple linear D pulses with normal intervening mucosa. So, what do you think? So, with these findings, uh, it still could be either a iliacolonic Crohn's disease as well as uh, the next possibility could be TB, sir. Even though the ulcers and intervening goes against TB. because of the ic valve deformed and ulcerated could be a possibility but most commonly first dd will be an iliacolonic crohn's disease sir any other differential diagnosis this is uh, not typical of uh, ibd crohn's no yes sir because you have got uh, uh, disease of course the uh, iliacolonic disease is there But iliocecal disease is there, but you have diffuse disease elsewhere also. Okay, but can't rule out it. Only after ulcers are there, after ulcers are there. What are the other differential diagnoses of this appearance? So you said tuberculosis, but un un unlikely because such extensive involvement is unlikely in tuberculosis. Okay, any chronic amoebia cases. Yeah, I would like to uh, correct that. In a person who is immunocompromised and having tuberculosis, uh, such findings may occur. They may develop extensive ulcerative form of tuberculosis because the ulcer of hypertrophic is part of the immune process. Okay, but if there is person's immunity is so low due to various condition acquired due to any condition, they may have extensive ulcerative form of disease, and they also present with diarrhea, profound protein loss. edema malnutrition so many problems are also there but the picture is not like this okay so uh, crohn's yeah. disease agreed in second thing else and if you have any any other uh, differential to offer vasculitis any chance of chronic amoebia is cmb uh, what is the most common site of uh, amoebia is uh, distal part sir rectum and sigmoid rectus sigmoid is a most common site Rectum. and we can also have sickle involvement yes sir but here and, it's, uh, and another thing um, amoebic disease by and large is amoebic colitis is an acute disease so it is an acute amoebic disease chronic amoebiasis is not in the form of inflammation it is usually amoeboma okay uh, so yes, many many especially all time examiners do not accept a chronic uh, amoebic dysentery they will be very annoyed if you say that so acute amoebic dysentery which may get prolonged or chronic amoebiasis is usually in the form of amoeboma or a carrier stage okay so this is a situation so it may have any post covid chances are there for this patient post covid <laughs> yeah, actually we have seen covid uh, Ulcers, COVID uh, induced yeah. coronic ulcers. So that is possible. I think. I, I think if so, you have no answers, you can put in COVID and uh, easily escape. So can that's, it be Bursett syndrome? Number. Can it be Bursett? Yeah, Bursett also can. What is the what is the the punch out ulcers? Uh, what, what is the most common site of involvement in Bursett? Iliocolo, yeah, iliocecal area. 
Yeah, basically it's ileum and cecum. Iliocecum and so there is a classical ulcer which is described in Berser syndrome. What is it called? Punched out ulcers. No, it's actually volcano shaped ulcers. Volcano shaped ulcers. What is this peculiarity? They will have deep pulses and then the, the deeply penetrating ulcers, the margins will be nodular margins. Okay, sir. Uh, the, 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 so that is the volcano shaped ulcers, classical of perception. What about Ersenia? Because Crohn's, one of the differential diagnoses in West, they see a lot of cases of Ersenia. So, uh, what will be the finding in Ersenia? Most common site is the ileum only, sir. Involvement. Yeah, ileum and cecum can also be involved. Okay. And then there are also punched out ulcers. I and, think they have uh, similar the, appearance, no? Ersinia can also produce similar also. Similar but, also. Uh, but yeah. actually, the varying size is one of the major factors. No? In Crohn's disease, even though you see multiple after ulcers, the size varies in, in Crohn's, but in Ersinia, it's almost the same size. Punch out ulcers. Somebody has mentioned about vasculitis. Who mentioned that? Myself, sir. Okay, vasculitis. Beshes, of course, is vasculitis. Any other vasculitis also can produce. Somebody has mentioned about diverticulitis in the chat box. Naveen, what do you think about diverticulitis in this patient? Uh, after the colonoscopy report, it's unlikely to be diverticulitis. Is think... there any diverticular disease which can produce uh, colitis? Diverticulitis, sir. Yeah, SCAD, segmental, segmental yeah. colitis associated with diverticular disease, a purely segmental disease of that particular area which has a diverticular disease. Okay, so uh, we can't have a, uh, inflammation or ulcers elsewhere uh, without diverticular. So that entity cannot be entertained. Okay. Can it be PAKA purely CME colitis? Person has some sort of uh, immunodeficiency. <coughs> CME colitis. Okay, we don't, we can't say, but uh, rare things can happen sometimes, but uh, I would say it will be unusual. People with a common variable immunodeficiency uh, without any uh, other viral infection can produce, can have actually ileocecal ulceration, nodule, ulcerative nodular disease, etc. So that is described. In the, in the small bowel, they can develop a nodular lymphoid hyperplasia. Uh, in the large bowel also, they can develop ulcers in the terminal ileum and uh, the ileocecal region. Common variable immunodeficiency. Can we proceed? Biopsy? Dr. Sudhi? Dr. Sudhi, can you advance the slides? Yes, sir. The, this is the biopsy. Yes, sir. The biopsy is not visible. Yeah, 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 yeah it's visible. Go ahead. Sir. Can is it clean out visible? Visible. 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 Shows ulceration and granulation tissue. Adjacent fragment showing variable and mild increase in cellularity with acute chronic inflammatory cells and reactive epithelial changes. No granuloma or parasites noted. No marked increase in eosinophils. No evidence of vasculitis. Sections B to E, that is colonic segmental biopsies, uh, show uh, fragments of IC valve and colonic mucosa with some of the fragments showing ulceration and granulation tissue. An adjacent fragment uh, shows mild increase in lamina propria cellularity with chronic inflammation admixed with scattered neutrophils. No significant crypt architecture disturbance, basal plasmacytosis, granuloma noted in the non-ulcerated fragment. No significant increase in eosinophils and no evidence of vasculitis. No granuloma or parasites not noted. Impression could be either uh, drug-induced colitis, IBD or infection. Gene expert for MTB is negative. EFB smear negative, sir. How will you move forward now? Sir, uh, even with the histopathal uh, CT entrography has been done. Should I go to the CT entrography? No, what, 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 Naveen, how, will you, how would you proceed for Because this is a, this is a ulcerative disease of the ileum and the colon. And uh, biopsies again showing only just uh, inflammatory yeah, process. Yeah. Okay. So how do you proceed for that? Uh, we'll, we'll try, I'll try to image for the uh, small bowel, sir, which we have not done with an uh, CT entrography CT to see, look for any long segment involvement or any skip lesions or any lymph lymphadenopathy with any necrosis is there or not, sir, which can give us a clue to differentiate between TB as well as IBD. Okay. So, Dr. Sudhi, please. 
Yes. And the CT angiography is showing diffuse mural thickening with enhancement involving the distal ileum and ileocecal valve with multiple discrete adjoining mesentic lymph nodes, largest measuring 20 mm, no obstruction and stricture. Multiple iliocolonic lymph nodes noted, no mesentic vein thrombosis, mild thickening in lower third of rectum over a length of 3 cm. This could be a rectosigmoidoscopy proven site of ulcer. Rest of colonic loops are normal, no stricture, enhancement or obstruction, no ascites, very minimal thin rim of bilateral pleural effusion. So what do you think after reading this CT report? Sir, CT report, uh, one thing for going in favor of uh, Crohn's disease is mural thickening, sir, with enhancement. And uh, why there are lymph nodes, 20 millimeters, multiple iliocolic lymph nodes? Sir, this measurement of the lymph nodes goes in favor of TB rather than the Crohn's disease, sir. So uh, you have mural thickening there on one side and you have got the lymph nodes on the other side. Node, yes, you are again back to square one, catch 22. So, what are the things in the lip node which would have given you some edge over Crohn's? Additional findings in the lip node if it were there? If it is non-necrotic, sir, it goes in favor of Crohn's. Okay, no, so necrotic lymph nodes, calcified lymph nodes, okay. Matted lymph nodes, all these things are in favor of okay. tuberculosis, but these things are missing here. Only it's that it is uh, 20 millimeters. Okay, can you have enlarged lymph nodes uh, in Crohn's disease or is it that you won't find it at all? Yes, sir. We, we can have it, sir, but it will be non-necrotic, sir, and small small sized and very less and non-matted, sir. Okay, okay. So, okay. Always so CT time. has uh, told that whatever we have seen on uh, iliocolonoscopy, uh, CT has uh, just confirmed it. That's all. There's no disease elsewhere. But CT is also showing distal ileal involvement. Distal okay. ileum and ileocecal. So there is a skip lesion. So but now, we found ileal disease. No? We found ileal disease, deep ulcers in the terminal ileum of yes, the sir. ileoscopy. No? So, so now, uh, uh, what is the next step? Naveen, what will you do now? You sir, have to treat the patient. Sir, uh, I would like to treat the patient uh, empirically with the ATT only, sir, rather than starting steroids because if the diagnosis, what we have made is wrong, the patient may flare up by treating steroids. So you will err on the side of tuberculosis and give an empirical treatment. Yes, sir. And I'll but see for the response of the patient, sir. What is your plan of empirical treatment? Does it differ from classical treatment? But in this patient, actually, sir, uh, sorry to interrupt, because majority of times, if it is tuberculosis, because la deep ulcers and uh, the the uh, biopsy is not showing any 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 evidence of tuberculosis, and so. Can it be a crown? Yeah. Deep punch out ulcers are not the typical picture. Linear of... ulcers. Linear yeah. ulcers were there. Big, uh, Lin... Deep ulcers are not. Linear ulcers were there. Right? Ulcers are usually uh, not that very deep. No, The classic finding is ulcer nodular lesion. Purely ulcerative form, as I said, in an immunocompromised situation only. That again is not deep ulcer. But here it is a deep punch out ulcer. That is a point. Okay. Now, not if punch that... out, sir. So, linear ulcers. Only linear, linear ulcers, not no. punched out. Okay, not fine. punched out ulcers. Okay, in case Dr. Naveen is thinking, okay, it is his freedom to treat for uh, tuberculosis. How do you treat? Is it different from the conventional treatment? Or what's your action plan when you put the patient on a therapeutic trial? I'll give him the classical ATT treatment as we give for pulmonary cough, sir, hmm. for two months. And I will look for the clinical response, sir. If the patient has been responded clinically for ATT, I will continue for another. What parameters you look when you put the follow up the patient? LFT and serum creatinine, sir. Most important is clinical well being. Yes. Diarrhea is the most troublesome symptom. Whether diarrhea improves, whether abdominal pain improves, whether appetite improves, yes. whether weight gain happens. Then serum albumin, if it gets elevated, the anemia improves, CRP improves, ESR was high. No? All these factors you have to have a close check. Okay, and uh, some in the that some total of all those things will give you an idea whether your patient is improving or not. Okay, and suppose, if the patient, okay, please. Su sorry, suppose if the weight loss is persisting on ATT, what are the possibilities? Uh, one thing, diagnosis is wrong, sir. Or the second thing could be multi drug resistance, or patient may be non incompliant, sir. Anything else? Is actually TB with the immunosuppression. 
or TB with complications like fistula. So these are the things you have to consider if the patient is not improving um, uh, on ATT. Okay, okay. By, by, we will ask the other other uh, other two uh, discussions what as to what they will do because Dr. Naveen said he will give a trial of ATT. Dr. Sudhi, what will be your option? Um, so one option uh, would be to start the patient on uh, uh, steroids with antibiotic coverage. Why do you want to give antibiotics? If we're not. Um, so if at all, if we're dealing with a possibility of an infective, uh, infection you even are though there is no mind. evidence of any para any. Sorry, sir. Which infection is in your mind? Because you have to have some idea as to which infection you are dealing with and give appropriate antibiotics. No? So you have to have some idea. So which one you think? Do you think it's a senior enterocolite infection and you want to treat it? Um, How will you diagnose her senior? Stool culture. Please. Stool culture. Okay, stool culture will give you. Okay. And I know, do you have a, a different idea? Uh, no, no, sir. Same. I will start with it. Uh, ATT, whether responding. Okay. Have you heard That's of okay. least criteria? What is the least criteria? L E, Bruce Lee, no, Lee. Mm -hmm. This is a connection with the, the tuberculosis. I'll give you that proof. When you are having doubts between tuberculosis and Crohn's, or when you decide to give a therapeutic trial, uh, these are the criteria which you follow. And if at the end of your therapeutic trial, which can be two months, three months, or you can decide it, it can be full treatment also. If you find the patient is not responding, don't make an alternate diagnosis. Lee says that if you don't have to make an alternate diagnosis, you should not make an alternate diagnosis because alternate diagnosis need not be correct. You have to reinvestigate the patient and try to arrive at the correct diagnosis. Okay, because if you have only TB and CD as two alternate diagnosis, don't jump on to the alternate diagnosis. You reinvestigate the patient and try to or strive to arrive at the correct diagnosis. That is the suggestion. Okay. And of course, there are new uh, new criteria to differentiate between Crohn's and tuberculosis. I think you have to read up. Over to Professor Shine. We have already reaching 9.45. We have 15 minutes more. Okay. So uh, go ahead, Sruti. Next slide. Yes, sir. So last slide uh, is just the, uh, it's the difference it's, in yeah. his investigation at discharge. So this is the last slide that we have. Yeah. Can you just uh, say what was uh, what was given to the how patient? Did, how so, did you manage? Let us hear. So we uh, we managed. To, uh, we initially uh, started the patient on antibiotics. That is prior before we had the colonoscopy and at presentation itself, we uh, started him on uh, antibiotics. But because his inflammatory markers and everything uh, were very high, we uh, high dose antibiotics to IV meropenem along with metronidazole, and we also added IV steroids. We added IV hydrocortisone uh, for him, and uh, he improved with uh, meropenem, metronidazole, and uh, hydrocortisone, which was eventually tapered, and he was put on oral steroids. So the steroids were given with with uh, what what in what in mind? Uh, is it because of so severe sir. disease process, or uh, you are thinking that this is uh, severe Crohn's disease? Well, uh, the steroid is given for so what? Possibly at presentation, sir. So at presentation, considering a severe Crohn's disease. Okay. It was started. So that was some super added infection, no? Because very high uh, yes, sir. WBC, all those things. With very high CRP uh, and counts, yes, sir. But interestingly, procalcitonin was not that. Procal was only 0.2, yes, sir. So Procal no, that, was negative. That so. was negative. That was that's a little against considering severe infection. So. Okay. So finally, what happened? You gave meropenem, metronidazole, so, and IV steroids, and patient improved, and then gave uh, oral steroids. Then, then what happened? Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, 
so he had so uh, within a week he had considerable improvement his fever subsided he had improvement in his symptoms uh, his stool frequency came down to 2 to 3 per day uh, there was no uh, there was the hematochezia uh, uh, abdominal pain he had uh, significant improve, symptomatic improvement with uh, improvement in his uh, performance status as well hemoglobin has improved then uh... Hemoglobin, yeah. So his counts came down from fifteen thousand to nine thousand. Inflammatory markers, CRP came down from two twenty eight to one point five, and hemoglobin also improved to ten. Um, nutritionally, his albumin was uh, almost uh, this. It was around three point three. So this is this improvement. Oh, uh, electrolyte improvement, potassium improvement. This improvement is over how many days? Uh, so he was in hospital for about a period of uh, eleven to twelve days. So a drastic improvement in the CRP from two twenty eight to one point five is uh, to one point five uh, to unusual in IBD. Yes, sir. This is very unusual. Uh, so this is IBD. over. Uh, it slowly it came down. Yes, sir. No, no. Actually, when from two twenty eight to one point five uh, in IBD, yes, just this is vanish over a period of one week. So with the antibiotics itself, actually CRP was start, started coming down, hmm. and then once the steroid started, it 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 came down. Okay. And uh, at the time of discharge, actually, now patient is sitting up and then he is eating well. There is no uh, abdominal pain, no bleeding PR. And then uh, uh, see another option is actually if patient again another one thing which is uh, left is actually a laparoscopic lymph node biopsy because as, as you rightly said the the size of the lymph node slightly bigger. But anyway, now he is febrile, no no industrial obstruction as such now. Okay, so what is the diagnosis of the treating unit? It is IBD. IBD. Tons disease, acute present, not acute present. <laughs> severe, severe. Disease. Okay. Uh, similarly, a person with a severe vasculitis also can respond dramatically to steroids. That's another thing. So okay. you will be in a situation where uh, uh, we have not diagnosed Crohn's, not with all the findings. Okay. So, uh, how will be the follow-up of this patient? Well, there is a lingering doubt whether it is still Crohn's disease. Yes, sir. So, how will we follow, follow up this patient? What are the options available to us? And important is, once you label as Crohn's, then lifelong it will become Crohn's. Very yeah. important before you label the patient as Crohn's disease. Yes, ma'am. I, I, think... would, I would just say, I would just say it's an inflammatory bowel disease, maybe non-specific, but requires follow-up. Definitely, madam. We have to redo the imaging and see how it responds, and then may, may yeah, even requ require repeat biopsies also. Yeah, yeah. I think that follow up is important. Yes, Maybe just some transient infection or something that came up and went off. There's some monkey pox and all in Kerala now, so we do not know it's monkey pox. Uh, <laughs> all rare diseases <laughs> seem to be uh, getting inaugurated in Kerala. <laughs> yeah, God's own world. Yeah, so yeah, just yeah. wondering whether it is the monkey pox that caused this type of a presentation. You never know, no? You never know. You never know. Because actually, most of the presentations is not fitting with any specific diagnosis. I think most important, nicely, they or both our faculty members went on very beautifully with all the... All, you cannot get any more questions beyond what was discussed today. Nothing more. Every question has been thrashed out. I think, and the learning point is uh, important is that you have to discuss the case. That's important. Whatever be the diagnosis, no? So, and, and follow up in this particular patient is most important. And because once you label, I think I would still consider, put it as inflammatory bowel disease for evaluation and follow up the patient rather than putting him as Crohn's disease and leave him alone. Most important is that. that that's, that's my, that would be my approach. Yeah, my also will be that because we do not have a very clear-cut uh, positive criteria available to make a diagnosis of Crohn's disease. So we will put the diagnosis of IBD in within uh, uh, courts and keep the patient under tight follow-up so that uh, you know if the, we should not also wrongly put the patient on lifelong immunomodulators and steroids and other drugs uh, for wrong reason. I have seen a couple of cases of a similar disease, a patient presenting with a diarrhea and uh, profound weight loss, uh, <coughs> significant uh, hypoproteinemia, and again, uh, punctured ulcers uh, in the rectum as well as in the cecal region, biopsy everything negative. 
and uh, some suggestion of vasculitis with some suggestion of vasculitis we put them on steroids and this patient remarkably improved improved remarkably means within a short period of time clinically they improved hyperproteinemia disappeared anemia disappeared everything disappeared what vasculitis if you ask me i do not know uh, but uh, these people remarkably improved so such uh, rarely uh, something uh, similar things can occur okay so it could still be arsenia it could be some sort of vasculitis it could be ibd chronic disease so we have to be keep an open mind what is that uh, babesian model to differentiate between tuberculosis and chronic disease anyone knows bayesian model bayesian model because dr ushadatta and dr bishar sharma seem to be talking about these uh, these entities or especially dnb candidates should be knowing this because you may have examiners from different parts of india and they are repeatedly telling about this bayesian model it's a computerized uh, sort of decision making process wherein uh, the system will tell you which is likely on the basis of the points available according to the clinical feature investigation etc so this is called the bayesian model to differentiate tb versus Uh, okay. Anything else, uh, Professor Shain? One thing, uh, some sometimes now they can have both Crohn's and TB. Yeah, yes. very, very rarely. <laughs> mm. uh, I had a situation where I treated a patient with eosinophilic uh, uh, colitis with steroids, and subsequently the patient developed tuberculosis. So the situation is also occur. Yes, treated for eosinophilic colitis initially because clinically it looked like eosinophilic colitis, eosinophilia tissue, eosinophilia etc. The patient improved initially and after about one and a half years, patient worsened. We read the test and found out again also nodular disease. This time granuloma was there. Okay, and uh, some some cases. Uh, something large granuloma or something was there, and we put the patient on ATT and she remarkably improved. Uh, we also had a patient sir uh, diagnosed as uh, crohn's disease and she presented with a uh, perforation so when when the la la laparotomy was done and there was tuberculous lymphadenitis so we started the patient on steroids and then she improved but still now now also crohn's disease so okay so we will wind up by saying that in dr sudhi in the initial you have done a very good yes. job it was a very splendid uh, case presentation with the very great details okay one one suggestion to dnb dnb students is that you will not have the luxury of this much time available to you to present a detailed case because you have to present within a short period of time and start discussing the case so maybe you are allowed only 10 minutes to present the entire case so you may not have uh, time to have the entire negative stories told in great detail so you have to cut short uh, the, the way in which uh, otherwise it's a fantastic presentation Uh, you are on a splendid job, and it was. I think it 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 will be always appreciated that such a case is presented from our science to the medical science. So, so in the initial initial presentation, after the uh, history is presented, you have to sum up. You have to give a good summary. So this this much eight patient presented with uh, predominantly this symptom for the last many years, uh, and uh, uh, like that. Now, so you have to give us a good summary. A good summary. In fact, most uh, during the case presentation, some of the examiners may be drifting in their thought process and may not be really listening. But when you come to the yes. summary part, they will be suddenly listening. Okay. So they will be suddenly listening. So the summary is very important. So DNB or DM also remember that you have to give a good summary. Once you give a good summary, it is very easy to discuss. And here in this patient, it is mainly predominantly colonic disease as presented by you. And if there are anything to suggest small intestine, that has to be brought in. Okay. So all the discussions have done a good job. Uh, so keep up. Uh, the nice presentation the nice discussion and read a lot read a lot about stool examination and uh, differentiation between tuberculosis and crohn's we did not touch the histological part of differentiation between tuberculosis and crohn's anna polymuts criteria you have already a talk in the isg website and uh, there there's another talk in the isg website on small bowel biopsy please go to isg website master class and read all those classes and watch all those classes okay over to professor shain for concluding remarks yes sir thank you uh, jayanti madam nurgi sir and thank you all the participants So on behalf of okay. ISC Kerala chapter, I thank uh, Professor Shine for having consented to deliver at the, today's class, and he has done it exemplary well. I would say it's one of the best classes that we recently had on chronic diarrhea. So 
uh, on behalf of IAC Kerala chapter, please accept my sincere gratitude. And thank I also you, want to thank uh, Dr. Sudhi Kayal and Dr. Anu Paulos and Dr. Naveen Chand for having this today case. And also I want to thank Jayanti Man for giving such uh, uh, great advices uh, to the presenters and also helping us with the tips and points in between. And thank all of you for joining us. And our next class will be on next Thursday from Jayanti Ma'am's side. Good night to all of you. Good night. You. Good night. Thank, thank you, Dr. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful job. Great. Thank you. Thank I learned you. a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, madam.